Let's go on a jaw-dropping journey through a seven-room home makeover. Get ready to witness the transformation of each room as we bring together style, functionality, and undeniable elegance. From the chic and classic kitchen to the luxurious master bedroom, these room makeovers are sure to inspire your own home design dreams. Plus, I'll show you how I've decorated these rooms for different seasons. Are you guys ready to see a dramatic dining room makeover? This is what the room looked like before. I just wasn't feeling the style and I really wanted it to be cohesive with the rest of the house. Another thing is that it was really dark. It had dark drapes, had a dark table and chairs, it had a dark light fixture, had dark painting. It just was a really heavy feel when you walked into the space. And so I wanted to brighten it up like everything else in the house is brightened up and I wanted it to all flow beautifully together. The transformation began by tackling this big blank wall behind me. Now, what I had on there originally was pretty unimaginative. It was one large oil painting. It was a beautiful oil painting, but it was a big picture on a big wall and that was it. I knew I had a great opportunity to make this wall a statement piece. So I decided to add some trim molding. I got out my miter saw and I started cutting. I cut all of my pieces. I'm using two different types of molding. I have a more decorative molding that I'm going to be putting on the outside and I have a flat molding that's going on the inside. I'm doing more of a geometric design on this wall. I wanted to do something that I hadn't really seen a lot of before. And I took some inspiration from some French Parisian pictures and this molding kept coming up. So I thought it would be a beautiful design detail in this space. added a chair molding to the lower third of the wall to break up the boxes and again to give it some more detail. The double molding makes the space look so regal. It adds a beautiful elegant touch. Now when you walk into my home and you look over at the dining room, the first thing that you see is this stunning feature wall. What a huge difference from what we had originally. A huge blank wall with a large picture and now we have this show stopping feature wall. I also put the molding on this side right over here to coordinate. Now maybe eventually I might put some pictures in. I also left it two-tone. I liked the wall color being this beige color and the molding to be white. I feel like the molding really pops against the colored wall. If you're wondering what to do with a wall and you just can't find an art piece or something special to go in there, try some molding because it really will make your space pop. It will be unique and it makes it feel so much more luxurious. Now we're going to move over to this buffet area. Let's take a look at what it looked like before. Inside the arch, it was painted in a dark brown paint. The cabinets were this orangish brownish color. Again, I had a dark painting right in the center of the arch, which was nice, but the darker color scheme made the space feel heavy. So out with the dark and in with the bright. We are going to start by simply painting the arch. And all I did was paint it the wall color. So I changed it from that dark paint to the paint that went cohesive with the space. Now let's move on to this row of cabinets right here. I did not like this orangish brown stain, so we are going to paint them white. I'm going to be using the same color as I did in my kitchen. It is a bare polar bear paint and I got the cabinet grade paint. So what I did with my cabinetry was I sanded it down and then I washed it really well with crud cutter. Then I sprayed four coats of paint with my paint sprayer to get a factory finish. And let me tell you, these things are gorgeous. They are smooth 
And because it ran straight into the butler's pantry, I did that as well. I also changed out the hardware. On the butler's pantry upper cabinet, I put some long lucite poles that coordinate with the poles in my kitchen. And then I got some gold knobs for all of my lower cabinets. I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you that this was not an easy task to do. Painting cabinets is not an easy thing to do. It is time consuming, especially if you want it done right, but they look beautiful and I am so happy that I did it because it really does lighten and brighten the space. It also makes it feel so cohesive with the kitchen because as you walk from the dining room into the kitchen, now the cabinets all match. The final thing that I did in this space was I got a mirror. Now, if you watched my last video, you saw that I got this mirror at my thrift store and I gave it a makeover. I painted the frame out in a warm gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. It was such an affordable piece. And now that it's hung, it is the perfect option. It's so much better than the painting. Here's why. The light reflects from the mirror back into the room. It reflects the chandelier and it makes the space feel twice as big. Plus it adds a little sparkle and shine, which I love. Now let's turn our attention over to the wall of windows. Originally I had some drapes hung. They were dark brown drapes with a swag at the top and some tassels. I think they are very pretty and it worked with the original color scheme and style, but again, they were very heavy and dark. So let's talk about my new and very much improved drapes. These are from a company called Two Pages. Mine came with these plastic hooks that I just slid right in between the pleats and then I got a gold hook that I could just put right over the top so I could slide them easily onto my curtain rod. Every time I walk into this room now and I look at these drapes, I feel like I'm in a high-end hotel. They are so luxurious. They are so classy. The drapes in this space elevate the look of this room. start at the top with this brand new chandelier. Now originally the chandelier that was in here was an antique copper bowl light fixture. Again the metal was really dark and the bowl portion was frosted so it really didn't give off a whole lot of light which is great for a lovely romantic dinner but for the most part I like my rooms nice and bright. So I found this beautiful chandelier on the Wayfair website. I love that it is modern. It has some unique cut crystals. It's light and bright, but it still has a traditional feel, the traditional feel that you want in a formal space. And the light just is so bright. The difference in brightness from when I had the bowl chandelier to now is dramatic. dining room table and chairs is like an old friend of mine. I've had it for like 12 or 13 years and we have hosted some wonderful holiday events here. We've played games, we've had a lot of laughs, great conversation, but the issue that I had was how dark the wood stain was and also the fabric that was on the chairs. It just again was in with that Tuscan style that I kind of wanted to steer away from. I wanted to go more towards this light, bright style. I'm starting off this transformation by sanding all of my chairs down. My original idea was to restain them in a whitewash. And what happened was the sanding went great on the back part of the chairs. It sanded right off, it was nice and smooth, and then I got down to the legs where it had all the details on it. Beautiful details, but it just was not coming off and I didn't want to sand off the, the detail, the scroll work. I even tried the citrus gel stripper and 
all that did was just make a mess. So I had to come up with another plan. My plan B was to paint it. Yep, it's my go-to. So I got my white polar bear paint and I aligned my chairs up like good little soldiers out in my garage. I painted them with my paint sprayer and it took me a long time. This was not an easy project to do. I wanted to make sure that these chairs were completely coated in the paint. So I did several coats, sanding in between because you want the chairs to be nice and smooth. You don't want to sit down on something that's rough. I absolutely love the way that the white looks on these chairs. The other thing that I needed to do was change the fabric. So I went on a little shopping trip and I stopped off at Hobby Lobby and I found this fabric that is perfect for these chairs. The best part is the week that I went, all the fabric was 40% off. So I got nine yards for this space and it ended up costing me like $80. So that was a bargain. I used my staple gun to staple the fabric to the back of the chairs and I think that they look brand new. After I put them back together, they just look like I purchased them at the store. They are so light and bright. They are gorgeous in this space. And one thing that I did do was I left my table plain. I didn't touch it. I actually really like the contrast of color between the darker stained table and the lighter white chairs. If I would have painted this white, it would have been too much white in this space. So by leaving this, this stained color, it gives it contrast. Also, if I did want a, a lighter, brighter table, all I would have to do is put a tablecloth on it and that solves that problem. So I'm going to leave the table just as it is. Are you a rug underneath your dining table person or not? I have always been not because I have children and I did not want anything spilled on it. But I got this gorgeous ruggable rug. It's beautiful and I've already washed it once so I'm happy to have this rug at the base of my table. It is a great way to define a space. It is a great way to add in some other color or tie these colors together. This rug ties together the color in my chairs. It ties in the color from the drapes. It ties in the darker shade of the table and also the granite that's on the buffet. It also warms up the space by bringing in another soft material. A lot of care and intention went into making over this dining room. I put a lot of elbow grease into it to make this transformation much more affordable than it would have been otherwise. All of the weeks of transformation are definitely worth it because now I have a space that I am proud of. I have a space that I absolutely love. I can already picture Christmas time in here, the holidays, having game nights, beautiful dinners. I think my guests will enjoy being in this room as much as I do. When we purchased this home five years ago, I knew that eventually I would want to transform my kitchen from a dark enclosed area, a literal elephant in the room that was blocking the kitchen from being a lot more light and bright was the wall. This wall separated the kitchen from the family room and it caused the space to feel cramped, enclosed and dark. The flow was also off because there was one entryway into this entire kitchen and it was just wide enough for one person to single file squeeze through the entrance. The original countertops, the cabinetry, and the light fixtures were all dark, and the design style was a little eclectic. We had some modern elements with the hood, we had some traditional elements with the cabinetry, we had some Mediterranean influences on the backsplash. It was just a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different styles and I did not love any of them. So after consulting with a contractor, a licensed electrician and a licensed plumber, I put on my big girl pants, grabbed a crowbar and started taking down the wall. 
The minute that wall came down, the entire feeling of this space changed. The other major layout change that we made was there was this raised bar that did a U semicircle that again blocked off the flow in this kitchen and the raised bar made it feel more cramped. So we took that down and decided to do two islands. The double islands are so fantastic. It has just made the flow in this space so much more accommodating. We can fit so many people in here now and no one feels cramped. So this first island, I decided to have my sink in. We did have to change the plumbing, which was a bit of a headache and in the process had to sledgehammer through the concrete in order to move the pipes, but hey, you know, I'm happy with the location that it's at now. We decided to go with a gold bridge faucet. It's very traditional. I love the way that it looks in this space. And then we also did a single bowl sink. I've never had a single bowl sink before. I've always had the divided. What a game changer. I can fit huge pans in here. I can put my crock pot. I can put all kinds of things I've never been able to do before wash everything at one time. I love this single bowl sink. Right here, I have a hidden garbage can that you can just slide right out. One thing that we did have to keep was this beam. It would have cost me a ridiculous amount of money to do a new beam across the top. So guess what? This is my new best friend. We're keeping this beam and I actually don't mind it. It's a beautiful architectural detail. I was able to trim it out in some gorgeous crown molding and make it a standout piece. Another thing about this island that I absolutely love is when I look at it from the family room, I can see this beautiful boxed out moldings on the front. It was drywall before and by adding some trim, some wood pieces and then painting it white, it made a huge difference. It contributes to the overall luxurious feeling of the kitchen. I wrapped the trim on the three sides of this island and it finishes off this island beautifully. One of the first things I did when we moved into our house was I switched our single oven into double ovens. We cook a lot, we have a large family. So I'm using these Viking ovens again. And what I did above these ovens is I added a mirrored cabinet front. We have a lot of glass in this space and I didn't wanna keep this white and I thought what can I do to make it really stand out? Mirrors are perfect. It reflects light back into the room. It also reflects the gorgeous chandeliers and it adds a little bit of sparkle. One of my favorite aspects about this new kitchen is this giant entranceway. The kitchen before had a teeny tiny a little walkway to get into the kitchen. Now we have this huge space. This right here is actually a congregation area where people walk into the kitchen, they stop here, they can take it all in, and then they can walk into the kitchen. Whereas before there was a long hallway and it really was not very welcoming. This huge opening is the exact opposite. It invites people to come in and enjoy the space. Another thing is, it is a beautiful way to view the space. As you walk in, your eye goes directly to the island, to the breakfast chandelier, and straight out to the pool. dream. It is absolutely huge. It is over nine feet long. And let me tell you, I just had my first party and we had over 40 ladies here. It was perfect. I put a huge spread of all kinds of tasty food and people were able to get on either side of the island. The flow during the party was absolutely fantastic. People could come in and out of the kitchen so easily. And while they were here getting their food, they didn't miss any of the excitement over there. Why? Because that wall was down. So I just cannot wait to do more entertaining in this space. 
especially with this island. Now on this lower portion of the island, I have the seating area. It's large enough that it can accommodate four bar stools. And then on the opposite side, I have my microwave. It's actually hidden inside of the cabinetry. I personally don't like to look at my microwave, so having it be in there is a perfect spot. And another thing that we should mention is the quartz. I cannot even tell you how many stone yards I went to looking for this specific quartz. It was like a bad game of hide and seek, but I finally found it. The reason why it took me so long was because in my mind, I had a very specific style that I was going for. I have a lot of gold in here, but I also have grays. So I needed a quartz that had both. And the Calcutta quartz that I chose has both of the gray and the gold veining. So it ties in the gold pot filler, it ties in the gold from the chandelier, it ties in the stainless steel appliances with the gray, and I just absolutely love the way it looks. Another wonderful thing about this was there is only one spot that has a seam and it's around the beam. So everywhere else in this space, there is no seams whatsoever, so I do not have to worry about cleaning a little grout line. And finally, I decided to go with two pendant lights above the island to bring in extra light. I love the lantern look of these. They're oversized, which is great for this space and it draws your eye in while giving off a lot of light. These tall cabinets are one of my favorite features about this kitchen. Originally, I was gonna go with regular size cabinets and then just add a glass cabinet above. But the more I looked at it, I thought, if I run a large cabinet all the way to the ceiling with thick crown molding at the top, it would be beautiful and it's something original. I don't see that very often. And so this is a beautiful piece that is really a standout feature in this kitchen. I did a glass front and then I added a small trim piece and painted it gold. I love this gold accent. It's just what these cabinets needed to make them a little more unique, but also it ties in, again, all the gold that we have around our kitchen. Inside of the cabinets, I have some tempered glass shelves. The reason I went with the tempered glass is because I wanted the light to be able to shine all the way down to the bottom shelf and illuminate everything that was inside. So speaking of illumination, I added some lighting to the inside of each one of my cabinets. Again, it brightens up and highlights all of these wonderful pieces that I have inside. It also contributes to the overall light and bright feeling of the room. This lighting is beautiful at night. Oh, it just makes this kitchen shine. And I am so happy that we did this. large lucite poles with a gold detail and on the lower cabinets I added that same pole in a smaller size and the knobs are crystal and gold. The centerpiece to this entire kitchen is this hood. I kept the lines clean to coordinate with the rest of the cabinetry. I love the size and the scale of this hood. Took it all the way to the ceiling and it really is a beautiful focal point for the space. The paint that I chose on all of my cabinetry is a bare polar white paint. Now, as you remember, the cabinetry before was really dark. I kept all of the lower cabinetry that was previously there and I painted it in this polar bear paint. It was probably one of the hardest things that I had to do because we crud cut it, we sanded it, and then we painted it, and we actually did five coats of paint. I used a paint sprayer so that we would get a smooth, professional finish. If you are looking to save money on a kitchen renovation, using your existing cabinetry is a great way to do that. The backsplash is like the little black dress of this space. 
It's a gorgeous neutral backdrop that really makes everything else shine. This tile is from Floor and Decor and I have a video where I did the selection process and how to install it. I ran this marble tile from the countertop all the way to the ceiling to make this space feel large. The coordinating piece to my faucet is this pot filler. A pot filler is a great way to fill up a large stock pot easily. That way you're not hauling pots and pans all over the place because the island separates the stove top from the sink. This is a great way to fill up my pots and pans without having to schlep that pot of water all over the kitchen. It also acts as a center point so that your eye is drawn directly to the stove. To beautify the mundane fridge area, I added some upper cabinets with the same glass fronts and glass shelving. I added a sconce on either side of this cabinet. The mirrored back is so reflective and I love the light that it adds. My favorite part is we took advantage of a small space to the right of the fridge. I had my electrician add an outlet so we can hide all of those pesky phone cords. I love the way that this surround looks. It's elegant and classy. I am absolutely in love with the finished product. Was it a lot of work? Absolutely. Did I want to quit several times? I thought it was crazy. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I wouldn't change it for anything. It was definitely all worth it. I now have a beautiful space that I can call my own. I am so excited to start decorating the space for the changing holidays and seasons. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those decorating ideas. I'm going to be showing you what I've been working on for the better part of a year. Slowly but surely, I've been making updates to this living room right here. Well, I think the best place to start is at the very beginning. So let's go back to what it looked like before the transformation. It was a dark space. It had dark drapes, dark furniture. The lighting was dark. The color blocking really chopped up the space and made it feel smaller. It was a space that when you walked by, it was very forgettable. It did not grab you and say, come sit down and enjoy this space, which is what I want. So we're gonna transform it into a cozy, warm, updated, bright space. So we're gonna start off with the walls. Now I have these alcoves and inside the alcoves, they have were painted brown. I did not like the color of the paint. It was too dark, so let's change it. First up, we had to move all of the furniture out of the way and we also took the paintings off the wall. I had Twin A help me move all this stuff out of the way so we could start off with a blank slate. Because the paint was so dark, I wanted to put a primer on it first. That way the darker color would not bleed through the lighter color that I was going to put on top. So I painted primer on both alcoves and then I simply painted the original wall color over the primer. By painting the alcove in this wall color, it makes the space feel larger because now it is one cohesive color and it definitely brightened up the space. Instead of going out and buying new side tables, what I did was I just shopped my home. I went upstairs to the guest room and I got these nightstands and I brought them downstairs. These are a perfect size and shape for this room. And so I simply just did a swap I took those raw iron nightstands and I put them upstairs. Now, the one thing that I did not like about these side tables was the hardware. I didn't like the color or the shape. Again, that's an easy fix. I use the same poles that I have in my kitchen, these Lucite and Gold poles. They are so pretty. I purchased them on Amazon and I simply swapped them out. It updated these nightstand slash side tables and now they look much more modern and they fit in with this space. I have been using this little technique for quite some time now and it is to use a marble 
tile that I purchased at Lowe's and put it on top of my nightstands. I've done it in my bedroom and I did it here. What it does is it protects your side tables or nightstands, but it also raises the elegant factor on it. It is so pretty and by using these $10 tiles, it updates them, it makes them feel timeless. It brightened these up in a bit just by adding a nice white marble top. I simply love them. And then to the top of the marble, I added my lamp turned ginger jar. I created these ginger jars out of some lamps and the light bright ginger jars are perfect for this space. The next thing that we're gonna address in this space is the lighting. Now, originally it only had four wall sconces for the total amount of light in this space. These sconces were antiqued and the glass was frosted. So the lights themselves were quite dark and they did not let a lot of light into the space. And I had no overhead lighting at all. So there's a couple things that needed to be changed with the lighting in the space. The first thing was I just bought some very affordable sconces from Amazon. They have lucite stems with white shades and I love the brushed gold accents that are on these sconces. They coordinate so well with my drawer pulls on my side tables and the white shade lets a lot of light into this space. What I love stylistically about these wall sconces is that they are a great juxtaposition between traditional and modern. Modern because of the lucite stems and the streamlined clean look, but because we added the shade to the top, it keeps it traditional. These are so classy and they really elevate the look and feel of this space we are going to do one more major thing to this space and we are going to add a ceiling light. Can you believe that this room did not have a ceiling light? It didn't. So we are going to install some electrical to the ceiling. I have a fabulous electrician and we were able to run some electrical wires to the center of the room in order to provide a ceiling light. What I selected was a 47 inch long flush mount raindrops chandelier. Now I wanted something really large for the space, but I didn't want anything to hang down and block the view out to the pool. And then at Christmas time, I put my Christmas tree there, so I didn't want anything to be in the way. You guys know that I love gold, but adding a chrome ceiling light was a perfect solution because the chrome almost acts as like a mirror. So it reflects those crystals back into the room. And by adding another metallic in here, it gives the room a lot more interest. Just like my wall sconces, this chandelier is a perfect mix of modern and updated, but also traditional. Modern because of the shape, the long angular rectangle streamlined shape of the chandelier is a lot more modern, but adding those beautiful classic crystals makes it traditional. The original wall art in this space was some oil paintings, which I actually really love and I'm going to keep them. I'm just gonna put them in a different room. I'm gonna swap them out for two different pieces. The first one is a mirror. I found this mirror at my thrift store. I love thrifting because you can get some one of a kind pieces and they are typically pretty affordable. Now what I needed to do with this mirror was change the frame. So I protected the mirror with some butcher paper and some blue painter's tape. And then I took it outside and I spray painted it in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. By updating the color of this frame, it makes this piece look so expensive. It feels like a brand new piece and I got it for a fraction of the price that you would spend on a new mirror. I love using mirrors in my spaces because of what they offer. They offer reflection of the space, so it makes it feel bigger. It reflects light, which makes it feel lighter. It reflects the painting that's right behind me. You can see it again in the mirror over there. Using a mirror as wall art in a space is one of my favorite solutions.
For those of you that have been with me for a long time, you will recognize this art piece right behind me. It was in my office. It's a very special piece to me because it was painted by my grandma. I absolutely adore this artwork. Now I am moving it for two reasons. The first was because in my office it was getting direct sunlight onto the oil painting and I did not want it to get ruined or have the paint fade so it needed to be protected and this is a perfect space to put it. The second reason is because of the color palette of this oil painting. It has the blues and the greens which tie in with my rug and I really love the frame. It's a little more streamlined than the ornate frames that we had before. So it's a perfect contemporary slash traditional piece to put into this room. Plus, it just reminds me of my grandma, which I love. The drapes that I had here originally were dark. They had brown at the bottom and they had some tassels and some ornate damask prints at the top. They were really pretty, but again, it just was too heavy and dark for the space. So I'm gonna switch these out. These drapes from two pages are a perfect option. Now these drapes actually coordinate with the drapes in my dining room. Remember that dining room makeover that we did? I swapped the drapes out in here and I also got some panels to coordinate and they are right here. Having the drapes be one solid color makes this space feel taller and larger. And I also took my drapes as close to the ceiling as I possibly could. That way the length really accentuates the height of the ceiling. I was also able to save money by not purchasing a new curtain rod. All I did was I took the existing curtain rod that was there and I painted it in a champagne color. It updated these curtain rods and they look brand new. So if you have a curtain rod that's the wrong color, don't worry about it. Just paint it and it will bring new life into your space. I will also leave a link to these specific drapes in my description box so you can check those out as well. Now let's talk about these two identical sofas. I wanted a sofa that looked almost like a men's tailored suit, something very crisp and clean. And the reason why I went with two sofas instead of like a sofa and a love seat was because I wanted to maximize the seating in here and I had the space. So I decided to go with two sofas and then keep the two accent chairs towards the back. I did add some of my own pillows to these couches. These white pillows are just from Home Goods, and I love the way that they brighten up the space. I chose a feather pillow that way I could kind of fluff it and karate chop it and style it the way that I wanted it to be. But the nice thing about choosing a neutral couch or neutral furniture in general is that you can change the pillows. You can style it for different seasons and holidays but you will always have a classic piece. In the center of the room, I have a coffee table. I've had it for a very long time. Will I switch it out in the future? Probably, but right now it's a great solution. On top of my coffee table, I have my orchid arrangement. This is the arrangement that we created out of the old light fixture from the dining room. This is a beautiful piece in here. Again, it goes with that modern but traditional style. That's what orchids in my mind evoke is classic, beautiful, but they are a little more streamlined, which makes the flowers look a little more modern. Plus this space needed an organic material. So this flower arrangement is perfect. Below the coffee table, I have a rug. I've had this rug for so, so long. Rugs are an essential part of a room to tie everything together. It's a great way to add color. I don't have a lot of color in this space, but the color that I do have is drawn from this rug. Because I went with a neutral rug back in the day, it still works today.
Can you believe the transformation that happened in this space? We really did not do that much, but by tweaking a couple of things, it completely updated the space. It brought it into the style that I'm going for in my home. I worked with what I had. There were a couple new light fixtures that I got. So just by changing out some paint, shopping my house, getting some inexpensive pillows here and there, it's now bright, modern, comfortable. This room went from a very forgettable space that we just walked by into a space now where we wanna come in, we wanna congregate, we wanna sit and talk and spend time together as a family. Now this four poster bed has been my pride and joy. I bought it in 2004, a gazillion years ago, and I have absolutely loved it. It is starting to show some wear and tear. The pleathery, leathery stuff that's on the headboard and the footboard are starting to fade and disintegrate. So I thought it was time to swap out the bed. When we purchased our home, it was a vacation rental for another family. So when we bought it, it was fully furnished. And this bed came with the house. It's been in a guest bedroom upstairs and I've wanted to refinish it for a while and I actually started the process a couple months ago. I did not film it, but I took off that pleathery leathery part that was on the headboard, the footboard, and the side rails. And this is what I was left with. I absolutely loved the lines of this bed and I knew it would be a gorgeous addition to my bedroom. So the first thing that we need to do is sand it down, get all of that lacquer off of the top of the stain. So I had my sweet boys, they helped me sand and scuff up all of the surfaces on the bed frame and also the nightstands. Our next step was to take some crud cutter and wash everything down really thoroughly to make sure that there was no grease or grime anywhere. That way the paint adheres really well to the bed frame. What was left over after taking all of those leather pieces off of the head, footboard, and sideboard were little staples. And after I pulled those out, there were holes left over. So what I had to do was fill those holes with some wood putty. I filled those in and then I sanded everything smooth. And finally, I caulked around all of the edges of the bed. And then before painting, I gave it one more good wash. I love the color of paint that I used in my kitchen remodel on the kitchen cabinets. So we're gonna stick with that same paint color. It is a bare, polar bear paint and I got cabinet grade paint. This is more expensive, but I think that it's worth the price. I think it was around $50 a gallon. It's done so well on my kitchen. So I want that same high quality paint on my bed frame. I also purchased a bare primer. And the reason why I'm going to use a primer is because I didn't sand the wood down to the bare wood. So there is some color that is still left on the bed frame and I did not want this dark stain cutting through the paint. So we're gonna start off with a coat of primer. Now I made a little makeshift paint shop outside of my garage. I got some plastic tarps and I gloved up with some kitchen gloves. I got a mask and yes, that is a shower cap over my head. I did not want to get paint in my hair and a shower cap is a great solution to keep it out. I am using a paint sprayer and the reason why I use a paint sprayer is because I absolutely love the finish that you get from a paint sprayer. I just purchased mine a few years ago on Amazon. It was really affordable and it does the job beautifully. I did one coat of primer on both sides of all of my pieces. I let it dry overnight and then I did two coats of the polar bear paint on each side for a total of three coats and then I let it sit in my garage for two days to dry completely. I also had fans on it to make sure that it was really hard and dry by the time we brought it inside. 
Now it's time to do the swaparoo. So we're gonna take down that four poster bed and move it upstairs into my daughter's room. Next, we brought in that newly painted bed frame and began to put it together. Again, I had the invaluable help of both twin A and twin B and my sweet aunt also lend a helping hand putting everything back together. The first thing that comes to mind when I think about a master bedroom refresh is beautiful bedding. And I wanted to get some bedding that was light and bright for this time of year. So I started to look at some bedding. I wanted some soft pillows, some delicate textures, so I could create a peaceful ambiance in here. So let's start off with this coverlet. It's really thin, so it's perfect for this time of year. I love the color and the quilted herringbone pattern on it. It's just so pretty. This coverlet also came with the two king size shams right here in the back. So already we're off to a great start. Now I've got these pillows that I absolutely love and all I did was buy pillow coverings. I have two of these beautiful velvet jacquard geometric pillow coverings. And then this pillow right here in the cover is a cream velvet pleated pillow. And then the pillows at the back are the ones that I always have on my bed. I love these, they're so soft and plush and I've had those forever. They are beautiful, they are elegant, and they brighten up this space and make it feel so luxurious. Now we're going to be moving on to what was a very blank wall. I wanted this wall to be a feature, a real focal point, something that would stand out. And I knew by adding a few box moldings around the bed to frame the bed and the mirror, it would do the job beautifully. I got some trim pieces from Lowe's and I cut them with my miter saw and then I put them against the wall using my nail gun. I'm also using a very long level which helps me to keep everything 100% straight. Walls are not always straight so it's great to have an independent source to help you keep everything on track. Oh yeah, and I also use the help of my voice again. They're so awesome. So once everything was nailed into the wall, I got some caulk and I caulked around each side of the trim. And then I also filled in all of those nail holes. I had some very ornate mirrors on either side of my bed. And with the new frame, it had clean lines. So I wanted to switch out those mirrors for something that was a little more streamlined. Now, as you know, I love my thrift store and occasionally this thrift store gets overstock from all of the hotels in the Orlando area. And they got a shipment of new mirrors that had never been opened before, still in the box. They are absolutely huge. And the best part is that they were only $49 a piece. Amazing, a brand new mirror for this size. Mirrors can be so expensive. So I scooped those up so fast. And what I did was I used a wall dog. I screwed it into a stud and then I hung my mirrors. I love how the trim frames out these mirrors, makes them look more substantial and a focal point. Let's talk about these gorgeous nightstands. The white color on these makes it look so crisp and clean and fresh. To coordinate the gold that I have throughout the room, I'm going to paint the knobs that are on the nightstands. I took them outside and I sprayed them in some metallic gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I just did one coat and then I let them dry overnight. Once they were dry, I just simply reattached them back to the nightstands and now they look so high-end, so beautiful, elegant, and they add a bit of sparkle with the gold knobs, which enhances and ties all the other gold together in the room. 
When I walked into Home Goods the other day, I saw these lamps. You guys, I was so excited. They are perfect. It's got this marble base the gold branches with these beautiful birds on it. And this lampshade, you guys, look at how pretty it is. I've never seen anything like this scalloped lampshade. And then it's got a pretty little bird on the top. So it was a no brainer for me to scoop these up. Getting unique pieces like this can take your design over the top. It makes it feel expensive because you haven't seen something like this before. They look and feel pricey. So if you have items that you love, save it, favorite it, heart it, put it in an area where you can look at it and be inspired so that when you come across a piece so similar, you know to scoop it up. Now we can't talk about this master bedroom refreshed without mentioning this beautiful new light fixture. You guys, I love this thing so much. What was there before was a fan. This fan was dark. The frosted glass on it was so dim. Hardly any light was able to filter through. It just was the dark spot in the room and just so heavy, I didn't like it. So I took down the fan and then I put up this brand new light fixture. When I tell you it's five times brighter in here, I'm not even kidding you, you guys. I tend to use some creative liberties when it comes to lighting fixtures. I have some unique lighting fixtures all over my home, but I think taking a risk pays off because automatically people assume that your lighting is expensive because they haven't seen it before. So take some risks when picking out your light fixtures. It will definitely pay off. I also updated the decor on my fireplace mantle. I have a set of three ginger jars on one side. I have an orchid flower arrangement on the other and I kept my DIY mirror in the center. I love the mirror in this space. It's so gorgeous. And look at how beautiful that chandelier reflects in that mirror. It's so pretty. With a few simple upgrades, I was able to transform this bedroom into a tranquil oasis. I'm excited to rest, relax, and rejuvenate in this space. It feels warm, inviting, elegant, and timeless. Today, we are giving this builder grade bathroom a stunning makeover and we're gonna do it on a budget. This is our pool bath slash guest bathroom. It's right off the family room and if you'll notice it has a door right there to the outside. This space is plain, it's boring. All in all, it's a forgettable space. So let's just jump right in and get started. Now I have a mirror that's just been slapped on the wall. It's frameless and you can see it in pretty much every home. So we're gonna get a new mirror, a new slash the rifted mirror. I wanted something fancy, but I didn't wanna pay a gazillion dollars for it. So I thought, let's head to the thrift store and see if we can find something there. Happy day for me, they had this beautiful mirror. I fell in love with the detail that was around the frame. The size, of course, was perfect. And do you know what else was fantastic? The price. It was only $24. Now, is this mirror in perfect condition? Absolutely not. There's a lot that needs to be done to it. There are some chips and some dings and some cracks. So what I did was I filled in the large divots with some wood filler and then I sanded everything down once that was done, I gave the mirror a good washing. I knew that I wanted to change the paint color. That was pretty evident. It was this white kind of creamish color and it looked really dirty. To prep my mirror, I got some butcher paper and painter's tape and I protected the mirror. Then I took it outside and I sprayed it in some gold rustling spray paint. 
I did a few coats of the spray paint. I wanted to make sure the frame was completely saturated in the paint and then I let it dry for three hours. Isn't this mirror transformation stunning? You would never know that we bought this at the thrift store for $24 and gave it a makeover. Before we hang our beautiful mirror on the wall, we've got a few more steps. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to swap out our builder grade vanity for a new one. Now this vanity had the countertop and sink combination. The sink and the countertop were one. Didn't even need a sink, everything just flowed together. It's not, not my style, especially the color. The color was a little questionable. It was like this brown, white, kind of muddy looking color, I don't know, I just didn't like it. So we are going to swap that out. The base of the cabinet is pretty good. It's a great shape. I don't particularly care for the size, but I'm going to save it and perhaps we can upcycle it later on. The vanity that I got is from a company called Her Nest. As you guys know, I am not a plumber and I'm not gonna to pretend to be, so I did have some help moving that in and setting it up correctly. All we needed to do was slide the vanity in place and then we placed the center stone countertop right over the vanity. This gorgeous vanity has four soft closed drawers and beautiful gold accents that give this piece personality. To go along with my stunning vanity, of course I needed a faucet. I selected this classic three hole deck mounted gold faucet it's a perfect addition to the space. It adds some sparkle and shine and ties in the gold from the vanity. I had my vanity in the corner. I needed two areas of backsplash. So what I did was I just got some marble and I created my own backsplash. So I purchased the marble that coordinated with the center stone on the vanity top and placed that around as my own backsplash. Another major upgrade that we are going to make to this space is we're going to add some molding to this wall. But before we do that, what we need to do is remove some very stubborn towel bars. These towel bars, I am not even kidding you, were glued to the wall. I could have done like pull-ups on it. They were so sturdy. I mean, look at this. Do you see that? That was legit right there. So what I had to do in order to get these out of the wall was I just had to cut out the drywall. So after I did that, I had these giant holes that I had to fill. So I got some extra drywall, some joint compound, and I filled that in, sanded it together. So now it's one smooth piece. So you might be asking, why am I taking down much needed towel bars? Well, here's why. When you use the sink and you wash your hands, then you have to go to the opposite wall and you're dripping water as you go, and then you dry it off. And then also, when we use the shower in this space, I have some hooks. So when we shower, we put the towel on the hooks and it's just easier access to grab your towel that way. So these towel bars were really non-usable and they just didn't add to the flow of the room. I'm going to show you the solution to the towel bar dilemma in just a bit, but now we have this blank wall that I want to turn into a show-stopping gallery wall. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some trim molding and some chair rail. I have the help of my wonderful twin boys who are kind enough to hold the moldings and the level while I nailed in these pieces to the wall. If you're gonna add trim molding to your wall, I highly suggest using a level. My levels make sure that each of my pieces are exactly straight and in the correct spot. Once all of my molding was in place, I caulked around each of the edges and I filled in the nail holes with some wood putty. I spent under $100 for all of the wall molding and I can't even believe the tremendous value add it gives to this space. Now that my moldings are up, the holes have been fixed, everything's caulked and ready to go, we are going to paint this space. I'm going to be using a bear, a polar bear white paint. It is the same paint color that I used in my kitchen. Right now, it's just a warm, cozy blanket. I know I love it, so I'm just gonna stick 
with what I love. I got out my paint sprayer and I sprayed a total of three coats of paint to all the surfaces in this space. It took me about two days to paint and then let the paint dry and then paint again. So it did take some effort to get to the color and the saturation that I wanted. But now this space feels so light, bright, and fresh, just the way you want a bathroom to look and feel. And there is no texture on my wall. So the paint makes it look like it's wall paneling. It's so pretty and it looks so high end. I wanted to create a gallery wall inside of all my rectangular trim molding. My inspiration came from Restoration Hardware. I love the botanical prints that they had in this particular gallery wall, so it's going to give us our jumping off point. I needed some fairly large frames to fit the inside of these rectangles, and as you know, frames can get so expensive. So my solution was to go to Michael's and get some poster frames. At the time I went, they were buy one, get one free. And the size is a 16 by 20, which is perfect for this space. The initial color on these frames was black and that's not really gonna fit in with my color scheme. But again, that's an easy fix. So I just slid off the trim pieces from around the frame and I took them outside and I sprayed them in some gold rust spray paint, the same paint that I used on my mirror frame. I sprayed the first side really well with the spray paint, made sure everything was covered in the gold, then I let it dry for one hour, I flipped the frame pieces over and sprayed the other side, again I made sure that everything was 100% saturated in the gold paint, and then I let it dry for two more hours. To create this artwork itself, I'm going to do it in the most affordable way possible. So to do this frame piece right here at the back matting, I'm just going to use some poster board. I went to Target, I picked up some pieces there, they were 99 cents a piece, and I just simply cut them to the size that would fit inside my frame. To create this mat that goes around the botanical print, I just used some cardstock and my Cricut. I had my Cricut maker cut out these frame mats. And then for the actual prints themselves, I got some double-sided tape and I added it to the back of my cardstock frame mat. And then I took my botanical print and I placed it in the center. Then I got some more of that double-sided tape and I placed it on the back of my frame mat again and put it right in the center of my poster board. Now it's time to reassemble everything. I took my newly created artwork and I placed the plexiglass over the top and I put the backing underneath and then I slid the painted gold trim pieces back onto the frame. I continued this process with the remaining five pieces of art check out this gallery wall. It is just beautiful. You could do more pictures. You could do less. You could use different size frames. If you have a large wall and you just don't know what to do with it, this is a great solution. Hey guys, do you remember the towel debacle? Well, I'm going to show you what I did to solve that problem. I purchased a coordinating towel bar that coordinates so well with my faucet from Amazon. I hung the towel bar above the toilet in the center of this panel molding and it's the perfect spot now. Now I can wash my hands and not have to drip all the way across over here. I can just go straight to the towel bar. Great solution for us. I love the new location of the towels. All right, now the accessories that I used in the room are a beautiful cut glass soap dispenser with a gold spout. I placed it on top of a marble coaster. And then I also added a flower arrangement. Now if this flower arrangement looks familiar, it was a dupe that we did a couple weeks back. 
the stripes and the gold and the white flowers just coordinate so well in this space. And then the towels and the bath mat are just from Target. I cannot even tell you how excited I am about this bathroom makeover. It started out, as you remember, in pretty basic, boring, blah shape. Now it is light, bright, classy, timeless. I love the combination that we have, the more modern pieces with the timeless paneling, the marble and the white and gold color scheme. We spent a very minimal amount of money to upgrade this space and wow, does it look amazing. Do you ever update a space? Absolutely love it and then look around and just feel dissatisfied with everything else that's surrounding you. Well, that's what happened to me. Kitchen makeover, beautiful, turned my eye and I saw this breakfast room and it needed a transformation. This space wasn't bad. I like it. I love the table that I bought, but the chandelier was too dark for the space. Now it was black. It was very traditional. So we're gonna start with that and we're gonna swap out our light fixture. A light fixture is an easy way to update a space. The light fixture I chose, I had been eyeing for months and I just, kept my fingers crossed it would go on sale and finally it did. So I jumped at the chance and I purchased this gorgeous chandelier. When it arrived, it showed up in three huge boxes and I was like, what have I gotten myself into? But luckily I had my parents who were willing to jump in and help put it together. My mom unwrapped a hundred crystals and my dad helped me move the electrical over and assemble the light fixture. When in doubt, you just recruit your family, right? So this chandelier actually took the better part of a day to put together, but it is so worth it. It is a stunning focal point to this room. The crystals that hang down are so modern and so fresh, and they reflect light all over the room. I love the teardrop shape. The light fixture itself is just beautiful branches that just kind of meander. It's very free flowing. And what I really like about it is that it doesn't block the view from the kitchen out to the pool because the crystals are transparent. You can kind of see through them and it's not a big solid chandelier that will block the view. I purchased this chandelier on the Wayfair website and I will leave a link if you're interested in it in my description box. So now that the light fixture is swapped out, we are going to move on to the second biggest thing in the room, which was the drapes. Now the drapes that I had, I had actually sewn myself and I'd had them for a very long time. But again, they were dark and with my new lighter aesthetic, I needed to brighten them up. Also, the curtain rods were dark as well. Because we splurged on our chandelier, we are going to save on the curtain rods and just reuse the ones that I have. So the first thing we need to do is take down the dark drapes. The minute I took those down, the space felt twice as big and twice as bright. Then I moved on to the curtain rods themselves. We took those down. I'm going to update the curtain rods, the rings, and the decorative brackets with some gold rust spray paint. I laid everything out on some large cardboard outside and I spray painted them entirely. I made sure that each part of the rods, the rings, and the decorative brackets were thoroughly coated in the spray paint. I let them dry for about 30 minutes, then I flipped them over and sprayed the other side in this gold paint. Once everything had been painted, I let it dry for one hour. I did not want the curtain rods to be 100% gold. I wanted some variation, so I'm going to use some 
champagne gold that I purchased at Michael's. I got a sponge brush and I lightly painted over the surface of the curtain rods, the rings, and the decorative finials. The paint was perfect because it muted the bright gold and added the right amount of silvery champagne. Once I was finished brushing on the champagne gold, I let it dry overnight. I wanted to highlight the raised portions on the rods, the rings, and the decorative brackets. So I'm going to get some rub and buff in the color gold leaf. I purchased this tube on Amazon. I'm going to add a little bit of the rub and buff to a cloth and lightly rub it over the raised portions on all the curtain rod pieces. This gold leaf highlights those raised portions and it adds a different shade of gold, which gives the curtain rods added dimension. The rub and buff is like a wax, so it doesn't need dry time. You just put it on and in a few minutes, you're good to go. Once each of my curtain rod pieces were completed, it was time to hang them back up. I did raise the curtain rods two inches higher than the original position to accommodate my new drapes. And I always hang my curtain rods higher and wider than the window because then it makes your window feel so much larger. I seriously cannot believe how good these curtain rods look now. If I were to go to a store, I would want to purchase these curtain rods. So by adding a little bit of paint to my current curtain rods, I saved myself so much money. And in the end, I ended up getting exactly what I wanted. Now let's talk about these beautiful drapes. They are from a company called K Gorge and they have such a huge variety of drapes on their website. So now that everything is hung, we are going to move on to the tablescape. Now I love this table. It's perfect for our family. It's a great size. So I did not want to change that out. What we are going to change is the centerpiece. So we're going to do a little trash to treasure right now. A couple months ago, I did a trash to treasure makeover from a decorative box. This box is broken and I took the top portion, this little finial part, and I turned it into a lid to create a ginger jar. What we're using today is the bottom portion of that decorative box, and we're going to turn it into a beautiful container for a flower arrangement. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, of course, paint it. We're going to paint the center portion with some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. First thing I did was I got some blue painter's tape and I taped off the bottom raised portion and the feet and I put the butcher paper in the center and taped off the edges on the top so no paint would get in the center. I sprayed a thorough coat of paint along all four sides of this decorative box. I let it dry for 20 minutes, then I came back and I did a second coat to make sure I got into all those little divots in the design. And once the box was completely covered in the paint, I let it dry for one hour. Now I reversed the tape and the butcher paper and I put the tape along the edge of the white center portion and protected the painted portion with the butcher paper. Then I took some gold metallic Rust-Oleum spray paint and I painted the feet and the raised portion on the bottom. I sprayed a thorough coat and then I let it dry for 30 minutes. Once it was completely dry, I removed the tape and the butcher's paper and oh, what a transformation. It looks brand new, so much better, lighter, brighter, and much more high end. Inside of our newly updated container, I'm going to create a flower arrangement. I love using the tape grid method, so that's what we're going to do. I got some scotch tape and I created a grid on the top of my container. I got a variety of beautiful flowers in whites and creams and some light pinks from the Dollar Tree and also from Michaels. I bent the stems in half and I placed them in between the tape grids on my container. I love making flower arrangements with the tape grid method. It is so easy. 
And again, bending the stems doesn't do anything permanent to your flowers, so you can take them out and use them for another project later on. This flower arrangement is the perfect addition to this tablescape. Again, it's light, bright, and fresh. The final project that we're going to be doing today is going to be customizing a pre-made runner. I found this cream runner at Ross. It was only $8.99. It matched almost identically with my drapes, so I knew it was going to be perfect in this space. The way I'm going to customize it is with an interlocking monogram. So it's a K and an L, K for my sweetheart Ken, an L for me. So I created this monogram and I transferred it over to my Cricut Design Space. I had my Cricut Maker 3 cut out two monograms on some smart everyday iron-on. I placed the monogram on the end of the runner. I used my easy press to adhere the everyday iron-on to the runner. And then I repeated the process on the other end of the runner with the second monogram. Now I have a customized runner that really personalizes this space and the monogram adds such a beautiful detail to this plain runner. I placed my runner down the center of the table and then I got this large marble Lazy Susan, placed it on top. Then of course we have our gorgeous flower arrangement in our newly updated container. I placed that on top of the Marble Lazy Susan, and I always love to add candles because it adds such a beautiful warmth and a glow. So I added a cream candle to this side. What a transformation. This room is gorgeous now. It started out dark and it did not coordinate with my new light and bright kitchen and the color scheme that I was going for. Now it is fresh and updated and it coordinates so well. This gorgeous chandelier just draws your eyes straight through the kitchen to the breakfast room and right out to the pool. The drapes, oh my goodness, they have added such an elegance to this room. It makes it feel like a fancy hotel. And I love the centerpiece and the runner that we added to the table. This is a space that I am definitely proud of. My office is finally finished. After weeks and months of planning and designing and building, it is finally finished. Now, if you remember, it was a guest room and with the help of my twin boys, we cleared it out and we had a blank slate to work with. In the inspiration video, I showed you two iron side tables. They had a beautiful scroll detail and I told you that I was gonna make a desk out of these. The first thing that I did was I took the top off of the side tables and then I spray painted them gold. Now this gold spray paint was a little too 24 karat uh, shiny gold, not really what I was going for. So I needed to tone it down and I did that with some champagne metallic paint that I got at Michael's. I got a sponge brush and I brushed it all over the ironwork that was on the side table. There's such a drastic contrast in the 24 karat gold versus the champagne gold. And I was going for the champagne gold, so I love the way that it turned out. So now that my bases are finished, I needed a top to my desk. I went to Lowe's and I got some wood there. I got some higher grade stain wood that you could either stain or paint. And I actually had them cut it there. They cut the top because I knew that with their rip saw that they could get my dimensions perfect. And if you didn't know, Lowe's cuts the wood that you purchase there for free. So that was a bonus. 
So now that my top was finished, I needed to do the frame that was gonna support the top. So I got some one by fours and this is where I'm getting out my power tools. I got a miter saw for Mother's Day. Pretty good gift, right? So I took it outside by my back pool and I set it up. I got my wood and I began to slice the wood to the right size. I used a 45 degree cut. I did this so I could get a seamless corner. I didn't want to see where the wood ended and the next piece began. So a 45 degree cut will do this for me. After I had all of my framed pieces cut, I laid them out on the floor to make sure that I had everything in the correct spot and that each one of the corners lined up evenly. And then I got a whole bunch of metal brackets. Now I'm using a ton of these brackets because I wanna make sure that this table is securely put together. I plan on using it all of the time, so I want it to be really sturdy. So I got some shorter screws and I screwed those metal brackets into the wood. The reason why I'm using shorter screws is because I don't want any of the screws to poke out either the top or the sides. To add a little bit of extra detail to my desk, I got some trim. This is the same trim that I'm using on my box moldings. I cut all of my pieces to the correct size and then I put some liquid nails on the back. I placed those trim pieces right underneath the lip of the top and then I got my nail gun and I secured everything together and then I filled in those holes with some wood filler and then I used some caulk and I caulked all of the gaps that were on the desk. Once the tabletop was assembled, I needed to paint it and I used Sherwin-Williams Extra White. I painted several coats over the top and the sides, and then I did a Minwax polyurethane top to give it a really good seal because, again, I will be using this for all of my crafting, so I wanted to have a very well-protected top. Now it's time to assemble it back together. I got those iron bases, and I put them on top of my wood and I used the same screws that were in the side tables before and I screwed everything together. Then I flipped it upside down and I could not believe how beautiful this table was. I was pretty proud of myself, I'm not gonna lie. And I just think that it's going to be such a nice piece. It's really sturdy. It's really the focal point to the room. And I couldn't be more happy with the way that everything turned out. The second really big project was transforming this buffet. Now it was like a mahogany brown color, which is fine, but it just didn't fit with the color scheme of my room. So I needed to paint it. Now, if you remember in my first design video, I asked you a question. I said, do you think that I will be able to completely paint this buffet using only chalk spray paint? Well, here's the answer. The answer is no. <laughs> I was not able to do it. It did not look good to me. It was really splotchy and I couldn't get an even coat. I'm sure that the chalk spray paint works really great on items that you need to maybe look a little more antiqued or rustic or maybe smaller pieces would even work. But on this large piece, the spray paint just did not work out for me. So we're gonna go round two. <laughs> I got some Sherwin-Williams extra white paint and a cabinet roller and we're gonna try again. So after a couple of coats of this Sherwin-Williams extra white paint and a bit of sanding, I was able to get the color of this buffet perfect. And then I took some of that Minwax polyurethane and sealed the top. So now the color transformation on this buffet is done. Well, almost. There was one last little bit that I wanted to do. Every pretty lady needs a pair of gold shoes. And so she was no exception. I got some blue painter's tape and I painted about four inches down on each one of the feet. And then I got some gold spray paint 
and I sprayed each one of the feet. Then I removed the tape and flipped it over and let me tell you, this little bit of paint on the bottom really just makes this piece pop. And the fact that I changed the hardware out, I swapped those older pieces of hardware out for these newer pieces. I got some acrylic and brush gold poles on Amazon and the knobs are from Lowe's. Just making that quick swap really updated the entire look of this buffet. I just am in love with the way that it turned out. It's a beautiful piece in this room. It really makes it so light and bright in here. And also it adds a bit of storage that I was lacking before. The third and final big project that I am transforming is this wall. I knew that by adding some box moldings, it would just make it pop. Let's look at what it was before. It was pretty stark, pretty blank, pretty boring. And I knew that by adding some architectural detail, it would just make it a showstopper. So I went to Lowe's and I got some trim molding. I came home and I essentially put it up against the wall for a rough draft just to kind of see how I wanted it to look. Once I had the look in my mind, I took it down to the miter saw. Now, let me tell you at this point, the miter saw and me, we are best friends. We've been through a lot together. And um, if there's ever a chance for you to brush up on your math skills, try some molding because between the measuring and the angling and figuring out the degrees, you will definitely use those college math skills that, you, that have been lacking. I definitely did. So I got all of my moldings cut to the precise size and then I took them to my room. I got some blue painter's tape and I taped them to the wall just to make sure that each cut was right, the size was right, and that I still really liked that design. Once I had that design perfectly set, I got my nail gun and I nailed each piece into the wall. Once all of my pieces were up on the wall, I filled in any of the holes with some wood filler. Then I got some caulk. I caulked around each of the sides of my trim and then I got that extra white Sherwin-Williams paint and I painted the moldings. I think these boxed moldings is exactly what this big blank wall needed. It adds such a beautiful detail to it and I honestly think that it makes the room feel bigger. I don't know, what do you think? Another thing about these box moldings is that it frames my mirrors and my gallery wall. Now, as you know, I got these mirrors at At Home and I love the brush gold champagne color on the frame and I love the rectangular shape with the circle on the top. I think it makes it feel a little more modern. And then also my gallery wall. I love the way that this turned out. My inspiration was Restoration Hardware all of their gallery walls. I took a different spin on mine. What I did was I took a large canvas that I already had. The problem was it had a giant sunflower on it and that just wasn't gonna go with the aesthetic of my room. So I got some paint that matched the wall color and I painted over the canvas. Then I got my Dollar Tree frames that had the gold rim around it and I filled it with some botanical print. I love these botanicals. They have kind of an antique -y feel to them. So I filled my frames with these prints and then I tied some fishing line to the back of them. You might be thinking fishing line, what? Well, I kind of wanted it to hover. So you really didn't see the mechanics behind why it was hanging the way it was. And fishing line does the job because it can hang heavier pieces and you can't see what's holding it up. So then I got some decorative nail trim and I nailed that into the top part of the frame. And then I was able to hang all of my fishing line and my frames. And the best part about this is that I'm going to be able to change out the prints for different seasons and holidays. It's going to be an art piece that transforms over the years. Now here's another transformation. These lamps started out black. I took them outside and I spray painted them in a mirror finish. Now the mirror finish was way too shiny. 
I didn't know it was gonna be quite as shiny as it was, so to the rescue came that champagne metallic paint that I got at Michael's. I got my sponge brush and I painted a few coats over the top of that mirrored spray paint, and I just love the patina that it gave. If you look closely, you can still see a little bit of that silver mirrored finish underneath the gold, and it just looks so pretty. It almost matches perfectly with the color that's on the mirror. So this actually happened to be a happy accident where spray painting something one color and covering it up in another color worked to my advantage. Now I looked for a long time with no success for some drapes for this room. In my mind, I wanted some shears, but I wanted some shears with a little bit of texture on it, not just plain white shears. And I wanted those so I could have some light that would filter through to the room. I didn't want to block off any of the natural light to this area. So I ended up just making some on my own because I couldn't find any. I got the fabric at Joann's and the nice thing about making your own drapes is that you can customize the length. I wanted them to be really long because I wanted to hang the drapery rod up really high. This drapery rod is also from Joann's. It started out silver, but like most of the things in this room, it got a coat of that champagne metallic paint. And now it ties in with the rest of the metallic paint in the room. These shears are so pretty. They add such a nice ethereal and soft feel to the room. Now I have a lot of new pieces in this room, but this painting behind me is the most important. My grandmother painted it. She was a very talented artist and it just is a very sentimental piece to me. This landscape is so pretty and it really ties in with the room. The colors are gorgeous and I placed it across from my desk from where I'd be sitting. So when I look up, I can see that painting and be reminded of her and how important family is to me. The final touch is just to add a few accessories. I have a large white jar that has some beautiful geometric designs on it. I have a gorgeous, orchid flower arrangement that is on top of a white marble tray with some gold detail. I also have a glass vase that has our gold scissors and the gold stapler that we spray painted in our last video. I also have a candle and this candle just makes the room smell so good and I love the warmth that the little bit of a flame adds to the room. And the final touch is of course that beautiful rug that was our inspiration piece for all the colors that I got at Tuesday morning. It just anchors the whole room and brings everything together. All right guys, we are all finished and I am excited with the way that everything came together. All of the sign and the painting and the nailing and the designing was definitely worth it to get this space. I'm excited to use this desk for all of my crafting. I am looking forward to changing the design and decorating it and switch out the prints for the changing holidays and seasons. I just am really looking forward to just sitting in here and getting some work done in a beautiful space. I think that's going to be my favorite part. 